I'm going to show you the blood moons again. Let's go back up to the blood moons. Watch this carefully. I want everyone to watch, watch, watch this carefully. What do we show everybody? We showed everyone that this, in fact, is the first resurrection on April the 4th. And we showed everyone at that same time frame, when Passover becomes Resurrection Sunday, is this coming April the 4th, just as it was during the first resurrection. And this blood moon is pointing to that. And we just talked about this could very well be the warning from God, that this is the second Sabbath, see, second Sabbath, second Sabbath after the first And we went through all of that earlier in this video. Okay. Now let's dig into the scripture a little bit more. Let's go into Luke 6, 1. Let's go into Luke 6, 1 and see what else is hiding in there. Watch this. Luke 6, 1. And it came to pass on the second Sabbath after the first. We've all read this, right? We've just, we've just shown everyone what that means. Okay. But now we're going to dig a little bit deeper, just a little bit deeper. The second Sabbath after the first that he went through the cornfields and his disciples plucked the ears of corn and did eat rubbing them in their hands. And so the Pharisees and Sadducees were all upset over this. And what does Christ say to them after all their complaining? He says, and he said unto them that the son of man is Lord also of the Sabbath. What Sabbath is he talking about? When did he become Lord over the Sabbath? When did Yahshua HaMashiach become Lord over the Sabbath? Resurrection Sunday which changed from Passover Sunday to Resurrection Sunday, he became Lord of the Sabbath. Brothers and sisters, I want you all to think about this. What has happened here? Could it be that what we're reading is a recording of a future prophecy? Is that what's going on here? Could this be? He's telling us he's the Lord. He's also the Lord of the Sabbath because he's foreseeing the second Sabbath after the first. Is that what we're all looking at? Brothers and sisters, could this be? What we're all looking at is a future prophecy of our Lord and Savior, Yahshua HaMashiach, telling us when the second Sabbath actually will be. When I took a closer look at this to see what the actual words meant, what do some of these words actually mean? Let's go into some of these definitions. Let's go into cornfields. It means a planted field. Cornfields means a planted field. Field. Let's dig a little bit deeper. It means also a seed has been sown, but it also means to receive seed, to receive seed. Here it comes, brothers and sisters. We're going to build on this. The second Sabbath after the first, he went through to receive seed. To receive the seeds, the harvest. Aren't we as the bride of Christ, the harvest? He's going to receive the seed. When he's saying he is the Lord of the Sabbath, could it be, brothers and sisters, what he's doing is he's foretelling the future of this Sabbath, that he's going to be the Lord of this Sabbath and the one coming up on April the 4th when he will receive the harvest, receive the seed. Here it comes. There's more. 
What does pluck mean? To pluck off, to take for oneself, to receive the seed and to take for oneself. And what else does it mean? Here it is. To take up or wait. Take, to take up or away, to expiate sin, to forgive sin. The second Sabbath after the first, he went through to receive seed, to expiate sin. Plucked means to expiate sin, to take up or away, to carry up, to lift up the bride, right? Aren't we going to be carried, lifted up? To take up or away, to expiate, to forgive sin. And who's the corn? We just went through some of this. Here it is. To appoint to bring a covenant and establish. He went the second Sabbath after the first. He received seed. Cornfield means to receive seed. To take up and carry, plucked. To do what? Corn means what? To appoint or bring a covenant, to establish. When did our Lord and Savior establish the covenant? When he became Lord of the Sabbath. When did our Lord and Savior, Yahshua HaMashiach, establish? When did he establish the Sabbath? Right here. On the first resurrection. And that's what he's telling us in this verse. That's what we're learning in this verse. When we look up the word corn and we drill down into its meaning, it's to appoint and bring forth to establish a covenant. The covenant, brothers and sisters, was established, absolutely established on the first resurrection on April the 4th, 33 AD. In the exact manner in which I believe it's going to happen again in this year on April the 4th. The exact same thing will play out. When we go back and look at that scripture, it absolutely is foretelling a future event when the gathering of the seed will be carried away. And he will establish his covenant. He will appoint and bring forth his covenant. And that's why he himself, Yahshua HaMashiach, is declaring he is the Lord of the Sabbath. Are you ready, brothers and sisters? We have more. We have more. There's a lot more coming. What this is telling us, brothers and sisters, is that he, Yahshua HaMashiach, his covenant with the bride will be completed when he comes to carry us up and lift us up. Did you know, brothers and sisters, that part of the Galilean wedding ceremony, the groom and his family make a covenant with the bride. Then both families have one year to prepare for the wedding. The groom goes and prepares a place in his father's house for himself and his bride. And they prepare the wedding feast. Then the father sends his son to get the bride. The bride's been for one year preparing herself. So the groom and his father are preparing the house. They're preparing a room for the bride. They're preparing the wedding feast. And the bride for that same time during that year, she's preparing herself as we should be. Aren't we as the bride of Christ? Shouldn't we be preparing ourselves for the coming of our Lord and Savior, Yahshua HaMashiach? And then what? So the house is ready. The wedding feast is ready. The bride has prepared herself. And then what? The father sends his son. This is part of the Galilean wedding. The father then sends his son to get the bride on the wedding day. And then what happens? Then on that day, the groom's covenant with his bride is kept. He keeps his covenant with her. He comes to get her. Isn't that what we're expecting, brothers and sisters? That our groom, our Lord and Savior, Yahshua HaMashiach, comes to take his bride on the day his father sends him to come take his bride. He completes his covenant. 
Isn't that what Yahshua HaMashiach is saying right here? He is the Lord of the Sabbath. When does he become Lord of the Sabbath? On the second Sabbath after the first, when he comes to take the seed off the face of the earth, when he comes to claim his rightful bride, when he comes to, to make his covenant and keep his covenant on that day, when he plucks and he takes his bride to keep his covenant. And what day is that brothers and sisters? He did that here on this date. He did raise the dead. The graves did open. And on that exact same day, now 2000 years later, we are expecting our Lord and savior, Yahshua HaMashiach to keep his promise to all of us that he will take his bride off the face of the earth on this date. Our Lord and Savior told us he's going to prepare a place for us in his father's house. And we, the bride, are doing everything we can on a daily basis to prepare ourselves. Because he is the Lord of the Sabbath. It's just like the Galilean wedding is playing out. It's exactly what's happening. Could it be, brothers and sisters, that we really found it this time? Could it be that this is truly the second Sabbath after the first, on the exact date that the blood moon appeared, when it was Passover Sunday, on April the 4th, going into Resurrection Sunday in the, in the morning of April the 5th, the same way as it was in 33 AD, and again, it's about to play out now in 2021, April 4th, 2021. Could this be? Could we have really found it this time, brothers and sisters? For the remainder of this video, we're going to keep building and building and building. I'm going to show you more and more and more proof that this is very likely the exact date of our escape. Brothers and sisters, what you've just given witness to and have seen is one of the most startling finds in any time in any end times ministry. The blood moon tetrad of 2014 and 15 was our Lord telling us to watch the second Passover. This is why there were two blood moons, one on April 4th of 2015 and one on April 14th, 2014. I believe that the first blood moon of April 15th, 2014 is telling us to look at 415. You see this 415? Perhaps this 415 is telling us to look at the year 415. Do you see that, brothers and sisters? The first Sabbath, second Sabbath, on 415, April 15th, could it be telling us to look at April of 2015? And that's why this is the second Sabbath after the first. It's building, brothers and sisters. We're getting there. Then in 2015, what happens? It's showing the date of April the 4th which is in fact the very first time Passover Sunday turned into Resurrection Sunday. Do you get it, brothers and sisters? I really want this to impact you. I really want to bring this point home. In 33 AD, there was no such thing as Resurrection Sunday. In 33 AD, this was the very first time that Passover Sunday became Resurrection Sunday. And it changed from the Old Testament to fulfilling the New Testament. It's the very first time that it changed from a Jewish celebration and a, J a Jewish holiday and festival to a Christian celebration. This is the day when the Lord's time has fully come. His time fully comes when he has resurrected. And in these years, brothers and sisters, as we've shown you, the year we're in which right now, in 2021, it's the only time Resurrection Sunday and Passover Sunday land on the same day and April the 4th as it was the very first Resurrection Sunday.